Hello everyone, my name is Flaw from the Yugi Cast, and today we're going to be doing something a little bit different. Um, I'm kind of tired of playing right now. Um, pretty much all the decks that I have I'm done with, so I'm just going to cast a game or two and see how that goes. Um, so I basically just went on Dev Pro, went into Rated, and um, here I am. I'm looking at a deck, and, or looking at a game, and it looks like um, player one here, Beck, is playing Elemental Dragons. Discarding, I won't tell me, discarding Burner we know. Whether he discarded both Burners or not, I'm unclear on. Um, but he's going to get out his free blaster. Uh, see what he can do. I've been reading the uh, Duelist Grounds forum on uh, Elemental Dragons and Prophecy a lot here lately. Learning how to do some really cool tricks with both decks, especially Elemental Dragons. Um, ways that you can, you know, with your starting six cards, uh, read Super Ridge you for eight in this deck. Uh, it's absolutely insane the stuff that you can do. Um, <coughs> excuse me. So, we'll see what he's going to do here. Uh, he's going to banish Burner plus uh, Flameville Guard for a Tempest. I guess he's just going to open up with the Draco Sack. Um, his hand must be really subpar. Either he's an inexperienced player or his hand's got to be really subpar. This deck can do a lot of really cool stuff. And one one thing that I've learned when you're playing uh, Dragon Ruler, Elemental Dragons, whatever you want to call them, uh, your main goal on your turn one is not to set up a field with a Draco Sack and some tokens, um, although that is usually a byproduct of what you do. Your main goal is actually to... Um, to get access to all four elements or all four colors, as they as they can call it, uh, on your first turn, you you want to have access to all four of the big dragons and their effects on turn one at the end of your turn one. Um, ideally, with the super rejuvenation that lets you uh, draw lots of cards. Um, if you can do that, especially in your mirror match, you're super set up to get over just about anything. Uh, you put yourself in a very advantageous position when you do that. Uh, Maxi doesn't hurt you very much, and you can do that entire thing uh, in a very uh, very easily, actually, but it looks like we're going to be seeing a Thunder King out of uh, Music 11 here. He duality for Birdman, I believe it was. Yeah. Revealed Ryo, Birdman, and Evac, and he's just going to Birdman set 3. Or not Birdman, TK set 3. Um, I imagine he'll just kill a token and pass his turn. Uh, he can't get rid of the Draco Psych as long as it has tokens, so you might as well, right? Uh, that is, that's kind of my only... I feel like Draco Sick would be much more balanced if he could be destroyed by battle while he has tokens. Or, yeah, while, while tokens are up. But unfortunately, uh, the fact that he's generic is not bad enough. Um, uh, he just keeps finding reasons to be expensive. But we'll see what we're looking at here. Let's see what our Dragons player can do. Um, honestly, uh, if I were him, my first play would probably be to, yeah, pop a card. Um, preferably a back row. Really? Um, dragons can actually play through back row relatively efficiently. Uh, however, see, because... Uh, I mean, I guess he's going to run into that anyway, but I really, I would have... Um, I would have targeted a back row. Like, if he had targeted that Fiendish Chain, it would have forced the activation a lot more, or a lot easier. Uh, and he's just going to end his turn without doing anything. Um, definitely don't agree with that. This is a deck that you... Uh, dragons are a deck that can't sit still for very long in my experience. Um, you really want to to push forward and do stuff with them as much as you can. Uh, especially when your Draco Sack is locked down like his is. Uh, you, you really might as well just put a monster on board. But we'll see what he does here. Alright, <sighs> <sighs> you guys, I'm a little bit tired. Um, so that was smart. Uh, he's going to use Draco Sack's effect and it'll, res it'll resolve off the board. Uh, Tribing itself is cost. That's how I can get around Skill Drain and Fiendish Chain. And oh, looks like I accidentally paused my recording there. Sorry about that, guys. Um, but yeah, okay. So what our Dragon player has done that was really smart was he tributes his Draco Sack as a cost because you can still, when you're under Fiendish Chain, you can actually still pay a cost activating effect. Um, as I understand, let's see. Let's read it. Its effects are negated and it can't attack, but it can still pay the cost. Um, so. He can pay the cost of Draco Sack to tribute itself and destroy the Thunder King, but uh, his opponent compulses the Thunder King back to hand. And now we see a, I believe it was a, t a stream into title discarding uh, Tempest. So we'll see where that goes. If I were him, I would probably. He's going to go Tempest, Banish, Blaster, and something else. So he can probably, so he can recruit a Burner or a Blaster. Uh, that's what I would do in this situation. Um, he still really needs to find ways. He's going to banish. I wish I could see what he's banishing. I believe he'd banish Stream and Draco Sack. Um, I don't necessarily, again, agree with that play. You 
you want access to your elements, you want access to your colors. Um, and the way that you do that is by playing around with their effects. You use your blaster effect to banish your tempest so that you get a blaster and then you also get a tempest search. Because uh, especially because all he's going to do is he, he's basically wasting effects right now by not um, by not actually using all of his dragons. And see now he's going to lose another monster to uh, compulsory. And at this point he's used stream and tempest. So now he can use blaster and attack for 28. Um, let's see, he can use blaster and he hasn't used title yet. So he can use both of those and basically put himself right back where he was. Uh, but he doesn't do that. He's just going to pass his turn. And we'll see what he's looking at now. We're still looking at a set card. Ooh, a Girgia armor. So it looks like we're seeing Girgia. That's a very interesting deck choice for the format. Or, or for this matchup, anyway. Um, I picked up an entire Girgia deck at the end of last format. And I played it for about... I played it for a few weeks This uh, at the start of this format. I almost took it to a regional. Uh, I decided to play uh, Bunny instead. And I did fairly well at the event. I ended up going... I think X3 and dropping. I was in a position to get top 32, but they repaired the last round, and it was like 11:30 when the last round was starting. So I just left. <laughs> I had no patience for it, especially because I had started the, the day like uh, I don't know, like 4 and 0, 5 and 0, and then I dropped two, and then one one, then dropped one. So yeah, it was it was pretty rough. But here we're gonna see our elemental dragon players dropped a max C. Um, this could very well be the Karakuri variant of the deck. So. Depending on what our uh, dragon player is packing, he could actually lose still. Um, if our Giga player decides he wants to just go all in, um, honestly, if I were him, I would probably not uh, not knowing if the play if the dragon player is running Swift Scarecrow, I would probably just go for it anyway. Uh, if he has Swift Scarecrow, he's probably got you. If he doesn't, then you've pretty much got game. So we'll see what he does here. He's definitely going to open up with a bit. That's a burrito. No, that's Beret. I always get them confused. Uh, but Beret into Nishpachi. And then Nishpachi's going to change its position. And then Armor will flip itself and then flip itself back up for the... Um... Yeah, he can flip it back up. Uh, this is all pretty standard combo stuff. I think any... we all saw Girgia Karakuri after it uh, won that YCS last year. Um, these are all pretty standard plays. Uh, this deck got a lot meaner when people started discovering what the teleport engine can do with Karakuris, though. I will give it that. And oh, the Joel Unlock Bird. That's mean. Uh, basically, at this point, what it means is um, he's not going to be able to draw cards off of his big synchros, which really is part of what the appeal of Karakuri is. However, he can still make his level 7s pretty easily. Uh, he can. Yeah, he can summon the Arsenal or Accelerator, sink for 7, get out another Nishpachi, sink for another 7, and that's almost game on board right there um, just based entirely off of making rank set or level sevens and it looks like that's what he's gonna try to do um, that's just one of those things that that's all you can do sometimes because uh, e-dragons do kind of main board droll and lockbird which is really unfortunate but it happens uh, so he's gonna get out the watchdog and he's gonna go for the level eight guy now if it's my guess Oh, looks like Beck just surrendered. All right, well, that was the game. Uh, I believe he realized it was game. He doesn't pack Gors, Trag, or so Scarecrow. So, uh, very interesting duel there. I hope you guys learned a lot or enjoyed this duel. Let me know what you think. I'm going to cast a few more games, and we'll see what happens. Uh, thank you guys for watching. My name's Flaw, and I'm out. Peace.